Hello world. So, this video is basically an impromptu um, monologue from myself to you about this whole concept of there being black holes in the universe. Um, I've thought for the longest time that I could think of that I've thought of anything. So, I don't know. The subject's been on my mind for about 19 years and uh, during that time I've tried to rationalize it over and over and over again and I guess I'm just a complete idiot or I'm stupid or I'm retarded or whatever you want to call it because um, the way that people act towards me shows complete disrespect for the fact that I've been studying the subject for 19 years. It's a hobby of mine, right? And you can't, I mean, the other thing that I do, which isn't a hobby, which is my work, it would be my music. And that's like the only other thing that I've studied as long as that. And uh, so basically, the subject to me is as comfortable to me as, you know, music. And when you look out into the universe with your telescopes, whether they be uh, visual telescopes with light or with uh, radio telescopes, basically everything that you see, anything that has an oscillation or a waveform, anything that can be recorded and approximated onto a scale can be expressed as music. So when you look out into the universe, like you hear birds chirping nearby that's what stars are doing stars are letting off these unique sounds and that's how you know what star you're nearby because it'll give off a certain unique um, frequency um, but the interesting thing is there's this enigma that kind of appeared in the last 100 years and that enigma is this concept of the black hole. And the reason why it's an enigma is because it's a deliberate, like, man-made puzzle that you can't solve because you're not one of the particular people out there that has the answer. But when you go and if you were to get all those people together and put them in a panel none of them have the answer and actually almost every one of them disagree with each other on a lot of things that have to do with the same subject and that to me shows you that if you can't get a consensus on something then it probably doesn't is irrelevant or doesn't exist like you know we have a consensus on what stars are um, when you look back and you look at the ancient Greek and you look at what they were, the way they looked at space, they saw the premium mobile as a bunch of fixed points. So stars were basically classified as these fixed points. And when um, astronomers um, were observing at that time objects moving in the heavens, they gave them the, the name planets because planets wander. The name planet, the word planet means wanderer. And so planets were the things that were wandering. And when we um, consider the relationship that planets have with stars, we see that they kind of extend from each other. They're part of the same family. So really, they're all planets. All things that are moving in the universe um, are planets. Everything. So that means everything's a star. It's the same difference. There's no real... The, the difference would be that uh, one gives off a heck of a lot more heat and electromagnetic um, radiation in different bands than the other. So, you know, that would be the big difference. And But technically, they, they came from the same stuff. So, um, you know, that's basically that. So over time... In, in the last hundred years, there was a couple of experiments that were done with um, in, in physics that were trying to test the boundaries of the speed of light or, you know, push beyond it. And um, um, one of the problems that occurred 
when you limit yourself to something like um, a velocity, um, which in mechanics you're only limited by like your mass and your fuel. So if your fuel takes up a lot of mass, then as you use your fuel up, you need less fuel to move that mass. But if you want to go really, really fast, you're going to need a lot of fuel. Um, <laughs> and uh, so anyways, um, there was this, uh, this equation that basically locks every... If you, if you buy it into it, you're locked into the light speed barrier. Once you have the light speed barrier, then what happens is um, you have paradox and paradox occurs because when you have an, two objects existing in the same time in the same place at the same time which technically can't exist um, they annihilate each other or they or they just don't exist it's just it's a uh, flaw in perception so it, it's a paradox so basically like here's a paradox you're inside your car you're driving your car your car is soundproof so you can't hear anything outside Let's say you have an external mic. You turn that mic on, and it broadcasts outside inside the cab. What's happening there? Is that a paradox? Because you could hear what's outside the cabin when you shouldn't be? No, that's not. That's not a paradox. But a demonstration of a paradox would be like if you, if you, um, you tried to take two objects and you put them in the same space. What happens is they annihilate each other. And so what, what happens is if the paradox is a phantom, if it doesn't exist, then there won't be no annihilation. So it's a misinterpretation of logic. If the paradox does exist, there'll be, ex there'll be destruction. So those are the two possible outcomes. And what happens is when you have a black hole, what it does is by its definition is it violates physical laws. You can look it up. You can look it up in... Uh, special relativity um, and general relativity where those things apply and you can find that um, that they that um, black holes violate that so essentially from the get-go the concept violates our understanding of normal reality or of, of, of our scientific perception of the way that things work in the universe but um, be that as it may we should be able to go out there and make an um, a uh, educated guess about where these things are and we have we really have made great guesses about where a black hole would be for example the middle of our galaxy so they say there's one there and that means to me as a researcher that's the one that you want to study that's the one that's the closest we should be able to get the most data out of but guess what we have we don't have data of black holes we have no black hole data not any at all you know what we have is we have stars moving very fast around an empty space. Now, here's the kicker. When someone tells you that an object can have so much gravity that it will swallow in its own light, I believe that that might be possible. Totally do, because there's light I can't see with my eye. You know, So I can make the assumption that just because I can't see it doesn't mean it's not being emitted. It's something, it's not being reflected in my eye it's being swallowed by something it's being absorbed that's something I can understand but when you take something that seems like a monster like a fictional like like a, a bottomless pit that's what it is it essentially is a bottomless pit when you look out around the universe what do you see do you see bottomless pits everywhere no I see stars I see big giant stars giving off stuff they're just shedding stuff I don't see I don't see bottomless pits. I see collapsing of stars as they shed. I see stars forming from the um, material being shed from other stars. Um, but you don't see the thing that they're telling you is there. And I'll give you an example. In physics, in uh, relativity, there's this thing called frame dragging. And what that is supposed to be is it's supposed to be when you get close to the speed of light or at the speed of light, things start to drag. Like the, I mean, there's a huge warp. And frame dragging would be like when you take a snapshot of where you're at now, 
and you look at where you're at b before it there's a you're very observable drag between one frame and the next and the whole problem here is basically that you're telling me there's an object so heavy that when light passes near it it pulls it in so what does that mean that it does not give off light so what I'm saying here essentially is if the object is let's say 20 miles across like some black holes might be really small right when it comes to their their size um, their mass is huge however uh, uh, what they're saying is that you should be able to see an accretion disk right and we do see accretion disks, but we see them in galaxies. We see them everywhere, anything that there's a planet forming. We don't see them around black holes or anything like that. Because see, a black hole, what it would do is it would drag space. So basically, when, when a black hole forms, if it were to exist, it would create such a warping of the space-time continuum that as it moves through space, it would leave a trail the trail would not be what you think it is. A trail would be um, s warped space. So what I'm saying here is because it itself is a time uh, type of well, it's not just a gravity well, it becomes a time well. What it does is when it starts to form, it leaves an um, imprint. And then wherever it, it is, it leaves a trail between it. So what I'm saying is, if there was a black hole there, we would be seeing a trail that extends all the way to the beginning of its formation. And that trail would be the, the gravitationally, the warping of space-time continuum, because as you approach the event horizon, time stops. That creates, thus, the frame-dragging effect. Therefore, because of gravitational lensing, which is, an, which is a real effect observed by telescopes, we should be able to see gravitational fractures, basically big cracks in space that you can't see beyond. You can't see anything beyond it. It would totally block out space because light can't pass through it. Light is swallowed into it, right? Because it's a black hole. There are no black holes. There's no black holes because if there was, wouldn't we see warping of space? Um, go on the internet, look up black hole, and try to t tell me how many pictures that you actually see come from a telescope, and how many come from a painter or some somebody who hand draw it or drew it on a on a computer, and you'll be surprised that that you can't find a picture of anything that I described out there, which is what we should be looking for if they did in fact exist. Thanks.